So I don't have a TPM module, which means I can't install Windows 11. So I'm going to take the only rational step and code a knockoff of Windows 11 in Microsoft PowerPoint, because that makes a lot of sense. Now, I have done something like this in the past. I created Windows 95 in PowerPoint, which was cool and all, except it was really buggy and it was a total mess. So if I want to make this Windows knockoff in PowerPoint, I need to actually plan it instead of just going to the computer, typing some random stuff for like five months and hoping for the best. So I actually planned something for once in my life. I made a mind map of everything that makes Windows Windows and circled all the features that I wanted to actually add. Then I put them into a, a kind of a spider diagram and I added all the components that I'd need to code to get it working. Then I would draw lines from one component to the other if it required the other component to have been coded first. And I did that for every single component and counted the number of lines I made. The ones with the least amount of lines would require less things to be made first, therefore would be made first. And the ones with the most amount of lines came last. And bam, I had an order of what things I would do when. So now I had designed the code, time to design the design. <laughs> Now, I wanted to avoid recreating Windows 11, so I imagined Microsoft never made Windows 11 and were just going to make Windows 10. So I just went back to basics and got the acrylic material from Windows 10 working and tweaked it a little bit to make it more modern. After that, I did a little bit of designing and I just created a bank of all the different UI components that you usually find in Windows. And then finally, using that, I created a final UI concept which I think is looking pretty good, if I may say so myself. Okay, back to the coding. Now, next thing on the list is input system. What the hell is an input system? Well, it just checks the input from the mouse or the keyboard. So it allows you to type things into text fields or click buttons. The first way I was going to go about doing this was by checking every single key on the keyboard. If it's been held down, then it will type the character of that key, and if not, it wouldn't. However, that has a little bit of a flaw. Well, let's say you clicked more than once within one cycle of a loop. It would only pick up that one click, and therefore you have a limit to how much you can click. And if it's a slow loop, then you'll miss a lot of the clicks. So, what's the solution? I don't know. We... How... Yeah, that's, that's, that's not what I'm looking for. In purse. Oh my GUIs, GUIs. Oh, do I have to Remind read all of this? Input context. From which game? Pad it reads input to the allow player as part of this. Makes, this makes no sense. I don't care about the history of bloody QWERTY. They are operating on the idea of the greedy one. What? So I got this random guy's code working, but I don't know why it works. So I'm gonna have to find that out. I understand now. Okay, time to get coding.
that was hard work, but I think I made some pretty decent progress. What the f-